prosecution will argue that Eric is a dangerous street kid who laid in wait for Jason Lobdell, then murdered him in cold blood. Right, then you will prove that Eric is a sweet, frightened boy who Jason Lobdell lured into the yard to kill him before he came in and slaughtered us in our beds. Amy. Hey, it's a fight to the death. I'm loaded for bear. You are not loaded for anything. You're an observer. I'm not good at that. Of course you are. You're a judge. Basically, all you ever do is sit back and watch other people work. <laughs> hey. They'll put on their guys. I will destroy them in cross, and then it's our turn. Put mom on first. No. Absolutely not. Why wouldn't you use Maxine? She's the closest thing Eric has to a grandmother. Yeah. Mother, I mean. Ms. Gray, in the time since this heinous murder, have you discussed the evening's events with the defendant? Yes, in detail. So Eric did tell you something? Jose, I don't, okay. I don't want that question asked or answered in my presence. Thank you. But wouldn't the prosecution just put Maxine on the stand and ask her? No. How can you be so certain? Because I didn't put you on my list of witnesses, so the prosecution will think that I'm trying to trick them into putting you on the stand. How do you know that they will not figure out that you do not really want me on the stand and call your bluff? Because I'm smarter than they are. Now, the uh, Superior Court's importing a judge uh, from Norwich to avoid the appearance of cronyism. A little bit of a nut, apparently, but that works for us. Why does that work for us? Mommy, I was thinking about Eric. I know, honey, we're all thinking about Eric. So I made hats for his birthday party. Eric turned 17 on the opening day of the trial. They won't allow a party. Well, certainly the three of us can, can pull some strings and throw Eric a party. Why does it work for us? The judge is a nut. Amy, hey, look around you. vacation time to attend a trial. What are you going to be doing? I may look in on Eric's trial from time to time. Put you on the list. You about done in here? Beg your pardon? These are Judge Gray's chambers. She's going on vacation, right? Y yeah. While Judge Gray's on the beach, her chambers are being loaned to Judge Nancy Paul. I'm Wesley Roberts, CSO. Did you know about this? No. Wesley. Do any of these windows open? Judge Gray, I'm Judge Paul. Thank you very much for the use of your chambers and the courtroom. I'm Judge Gray, CSO, Bruce Van Oh, sorry. Sorry. Fear of racism versus fear of sexism, and fear of racism went out. <laughs> You're gonna break that. Uh, it's, ni it's nice to meet you, Judge Paul. The presiding judge gave me your chambers behind your back. Do you know why? He doesn't like you. How do you know that? Intuition. Listen, but don't worry. You'll go on your vacation. This whole trial will be history, and I will be back in Norwich. You're, you're, uh, you're from Norwich? Yes, the Riviera of Connecticut without the Riviera. You were on the Eric Black trial. That's right. Uh, we shouldn't be talking. I'm the reason you were imported. Eric Black is a friend of the family's. Well, we're in bounds. We have two witnesses right here, CSOs. But while we're talking about it, what do you think? Just a little judicial humor. You're going to break that window. We should get out of here. It's uh, nice to have never met you, Judge Paul. Yeah, nice to have never met you as well. I didn't want it open permanently, Wesley. A birthday party? I don't feel very festive. Well, do it for Lauren. She made hats. Mr. Collins says it will look good to have um, supporters at the trial. Is there anyone you can think of? No. Time's up. Um, I have nightmares about what happened. That means you're not a psychopath. I find that reassuring. 
There is one friend from school, uh, Mark Thurber. Sean has his phone number. Mark Thurber. Bruce. I, um, I broke up with Gordon. Who would have seen that coming? Wait, but shouldn't he have seen it? Since he's an astrologer? I'm already sorry I told you. I think you broke up with him to give me a clear shot. I find your terminology offensive. But I'm right. Are you asking me out? Yes. For more vacation? Rebecca's going to stay with her mother? Let's run off to New York together. Oh, big man. We haven't reached the checking into hotel stage yet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, then what we should do is get together and discuss various stages and how we might reach them. Mr. Braun, you're too old to be afraid of a shot. I'm not afraid of the shot, lady. I'm afraid of getting it from the hired help. Yeah, I would be too, especially when Nurse Corazon around here we call her Vlad the Impaler. Not an appropriate time for hilarious little jokes, Dr. McFarlane. Are you a full doctor or another half doctor? What's the skinny? No offense. Mr. Braun is a non-insulin dependent diabetic. He received a burn and puncture wound on his arm while changing the oil in his car. Dr. Redikert ordered a tetanus shot, but Mr. Braun has already chased off three interns and a resident. You need a tetanus shot, Mr. Braun. Fine. You give it to me. All right. I need a hypodermic with a big, fat needle and an ampule of tetanus. We're supposed to use these. Didn't you hear me? A dull, rusty needle and the really thick, syrupy tetanus solution. He's kidding, right? That's Jim Lonsdale, Eric's prosecutor. Lonsdale's good. Yeah? She really thinks Eric's guilty. Who's that with her? It's Lisa Lobdell, the victim's sister. I don't think of Jason as having a family. Everybody has family, even psycho stalkers. Amy, Bruce, Mr. Collins, meet Eric's friend, Mark Thurber. Walk him out to support Eric. Connecticut versus Eric Black. Judge Paul wants to address everybody. That's why do judges talk to witnesses before they testify. Mm -hmm. I'm quoting from this side. Is the seal crooked? Everybody here? Fine, there are a few elephants in the room that I'd like to acknowledge before we get going. You have a very innocent face. And a very snappy suit. Uh, Maxine bought it for me. I assume you mean the suit, not your face. Maxine, that would be your uh, DCF caseworker, is that correct? That is correct. Do you buy suits for all your charges or just those accused of murder? Are those my only choices? Pretty much. You can sit. Also in the court today, Superior Court Judge Amy Gray. And regional this is not normal uh, judicial behavior. Normal. Are like you making a witness go out and change because you don't like her belly button? And Mr. Van Exel, the court services officer. Did your boss require your presence today? Uh, no, Your Honor. I am a family friend. It's very touching. And you in the back. Who are you? Oh, Mark Thurber, ma'am. Just a friend. No one important. Oh, friends are very important at a trial. Especially those without influence. And I assume you're a relative of the victim. I'm his sister. I'm very sorry for your loss. And I wonder how all this conspicuous support for the defendant looks to you. I... Not fair. I imagine you compare your side of the courtroom to the defense side of the courtroom and you worry that I'm going to be swayed that a kid with this kind of high-powered influence must be innocent. Well, there is an alternative interpretation. Maybe he is just a very bad kid who threw away his own life as well as the life of your brother. Those are the elephants. Now let's skedaddle the witnesses out of the room and get started, shall we? Ms. Lonsdale, I believe you're first. 
<clears throat> the people will show that Eric Black, a former street hustler. Okay, okay, okay. Lawyers, here's my philosophy, okay? All finger pointing, all name calling, all general snottiness will be relegated to closing arguments when and if the charges can be substantiated. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. The evidence will show that Eric Black ambushed Jason Lobdell on the night of his death. Forensic evidence will show that Jason Lobdell was fleeing at the time of his murder, that he was unarmed at the time of the attack upon his person, and that the murder weapon, a knife, belonged to Eric Black. In short, we will prove that Eric Black planned and executed the cold-blooded murder of Jason Lobdell and should bear full culpability under the law. <clears throat> Dr. Masuko, can you characterize the wounds suffered by the murder victim? The victim's hands and forearms were slashed. Objection. The references to murder and victim are prejudicial. Sustained. Please use the term killer and dead guy. Are these the type of wounds usually referred to as defensive? Yes. Did you find any defensive wounds on the killer? None whatsoever. Is this congruent with the defense's contention that Eric Black wrested the knife from Jason Lobdell and killed him in self-defense? No. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I am always amazed at how much you forensic types can tell from a few scratches. You're like those old Indian trackers in the westerns who could tell the color of a man's hair by the way his horse walked through the water. <laughs> Lose the sarcasm, Mr. Collins. As much as I enjoy it personally. Right. <clears throat> These defensive wounds. How can you be sure that Mr. Lobdell was backing away? The cuts tapered, became shallower. If the victim had been advancing, they'd have deepened. Simple physics. Except, couldn't the victim have been advancing while my client fended him off with the knife? That would indicate extraordinary aggression. My contention is, sir, that the victim was staggeringly aggressive, advancing so viciously, in fact, that he essentially drove the blade into his own heart. Is that possible? Again, the magnitude of rage would be so pronounced. Say the victim was a psychotic stalker. Theoretically, no slander intended against the deceased Mr. Lobdell. Given that set of circumstances, yes. Maybe that's what happened. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> What's wrong with me? I mean, aside from the fact that you're overweight, middle-aged, and suffering from diabetes? 102.8 with a bullet. Oh, wow. This is blistering, but it's not showing any sign of infection. Why are you running a fever? Are you supposed to know that? Yeah, that's right. Let's take some blood. More needles? Start Mr. Braun on a vancomycin drip per pharmacy, and we'll get this set right in an hour. mommy this time not too late honey an hour and six minutes I can tell time upside down now oh I hello <laughs> I'm Zola I'm Rebecca I thought you were my mommy no <laughs> Uh, your daddy and I were going to, um... I'm sorry, should I... Come in. Rebecca's mother's running a little late. One hour and seven minutes. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hmm. What a lovely gathering. Can we confirm how long you're going to keep Rebecca? I'll know what I know. At which time I will call you on the telephone, and then you'll know. I have plans. Mm. Yeah, I see that. You're going to want to lay off the suggestive tone with me. Zoa, call me when you can. Yeah, have a good time, babe. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Bye. 
I'm sorry, this is new for me. I'll polish up my insult with the smile skills. <laughs> Good. You say you were asleep, Judge Gray? Yes. Then you were wakened by the burglar alarm? No. Then what woke you? Um, it could have been the wind or nothing. A bad dream. If Eric were moving around downstairs, crossing from window to window, keeping watch, might that wake you up? Yeah. Or if he went to the bathroom or got himself a glass of water. Oh, good one. <laughs> where were you when the burglar alarm sounded? In the upstairs hallway, talking to my mother. You live with your mother? It works for us. Judge Gray, what happened when you and your mother heard the burglar alarm? Well, we rushed downstairs, and uh, we could see that the den door was open, and outside Eric was... Um, that Eric was outside. Standing over Jason Lobdell's body? Yes. With a bloody knife in his hand? Yes. With blood all over his chest? Uh, all over his T-shirt and jeans, yes. Was the house abnormally cold? No. Then why the T-shirt and jeans? I can't answer that. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Collins. Judge Gray. What was Eric wearing on his feet? On his feet? He was barefoot. If he expected trouble, if he expected to kill someone out in the backyard on a cold October night, don't you think he'd wear shoes? Objection. Speculation. Counsel asked the witness to speculate about the T-shirt and jeans. Mm. I was wondering why you didn't object. Overruled. I would expect someone planning an ambush to wear shoes. Three years ago, Mr. Brown suffered congestive heart failure. I put him on a strong diuretic with good responses. Echocardiogram showed improvement. He went off it a year later. He's complaining about pains in his hip and his side. Doesn't make sense. But Chem 20 is fine. CBC and diff normal. No indications of left shift. Blood cultures are normal. Why is his temperature rising? Have you, have you ever seen anything like this before? Are you asking a nurse to consult? I'm not one of those kind of doctors, okay? I'm not going to blame any of this on you, and I'm stumped. So if, if you have something, please share. Well, I've never seen anything like this. I'm completely confused. Now, doctor, if you tell any of the other nurses I said this, they will not believe you, and I'll deny it. You better get Lily in here. Yes. Come on. Okay, okay. Are you ready for your surprise? Bring it on. Wow. Thanks, everyone. Now make a wish, but don't tell us what it is. <sighs> Thanks, everybody. This is great. Oh, uh, come on. Last year we all went bowling for your birthday. That was great. This sucks, monkey butt. What do you think about Eric's judge? Judge Paul? She's okay. She's okay? She's out there, baby. Oh, says the judge who sentenced a gangbanger to listen to show tunes? What are you suggesting? That we're similar in some way? Because we're not. All right. I mean, why does she look at her CSO all the time? Does she need his approval for every ruling? Ooh, well, rumor has it she's been carrying on an affair with him for the last ten years. Well, the way she looks at him, I believe it. Happy birthday, Eric. Thank you, Mr. Van Exel. Bruce, you brought Eric a woman for a birthday present. <sighs> the kind of humor where people own other people is not amusing to African Americans. Oh, my God. I, I'm so sorry. I absolutely apologize. This is my friend Zola Knox, and she is torturing you for her own amusement because you're white. Have some cake, Miss Knox. No, thanks. I'm cutting down on my carbs. This young man is incarcerated, facing murder charges. No one knows when he will be allowed to have another party, and, and you are concerned about your carbs? Oh, my God. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Of course I can have a piece. This is my friend Maxine Gray. You two have a lot in common. Hey, it's okay. So I brought you a present, but they wouldn't let me bring it in. Oh, yeah? What is it? Okay. Now, what do you want more than anything? 
because that's what I got you. <laughs> Yeah. I'm brushing my hair back from my forehead. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice way to wake someone up. Ron Braun died. Why wasn't I called? It happened very quickly. I'm his doctor. I was in the hospital. You should have called me. I called for a doctor. I responded first. He went into respiratory distress, so I started resuscitation, but he went into full arrest. We initiated a code blue and we didn't get a rhythm. There's nothing anyone could have done. Well, we won't know that now, will we? Because I never had the chance to keep my patient from dying, did I? If this ever happens again, I'll have your job. I'll go. Dr. McCarty. What? The patient died. You'll have to face a board. So will Dr. Labonte, and so will I. So? So maybe instead of antagonizing nurses who can be very helpful in situations like these, you could play it a little smarter. He came in here with a burn on his arm, and he's going out in a body bag. And thanks for bringing Mark. Did you like him? Is that why you asked me to stay? To ask me if I think Mark is cute and nice? No. What if they ask me about the knife? They can only ask you about the knife if Mr. Collins puts you on the stand. Mr. Collins says my testimony totally explains the forensics. You haven't told him about the knife? He never asked. He told me never to tell him anything he didn't ask. When I admit it's my knife is premeditation, I go to jail. I do not agree. I can't risk it. I'm, I've been in jail before. What do you want? My permission to lie on the stand under oath? Because I will not give you that permission. You know my beliefs. We make our choices and we live with the consequences. The consequences of lying are I stay out of jail. A good man does not lie under oath. What is the use of being a good man in jail? Do you think this is another small, unimportant lie? Because it's not. It is a lie about the death of a human being that makes it big and very important. Time's up. Um, Mark is... He means something to me, like no one ever... It's another reason to stay out of jail, that's all. Well, it's too late for dinner, but we can drop by Goodwin's, have a drink, eat some crab puffs. <laughs> Are crab puffs still in season? Do you even like crab puffs? Okay, <laughs> okay, forget crab puffs. I know a place where we bring our own wine, they look the other way and feed us jambalaya. I can't go out with you. Wow. I really hate jambalaya. I don't want you to be mad at me. Why would I get mad? Why right, could you keep jerking me back and forth? You're in love with two other women. What? Your ex-wife. We were never married. And your boss. I saw you with both of them today, and it was obvious. Big man, you're a mess. And you'll make a mess out of me if I let you. Forget this. I'm not doing any more defending myself or arguing or assuring you. I'm done. I'm just going to take you home and we'll forget we ever met. That would be best for both of us. I know that now. I didn't before, but I sure as hell know it now. We still don't know. All right. 
It looks like you did almost everything by the book. Almost? Let me rephrase that, Dr. Levant. You did everything by the book. There's no way a board will find you culpable in Ron Braun's death. Lovely. No, it's it's nothing, but still. What? You didn't use a prepackaged tetanus shot. You used a hypodermic and ampule. So that doesn't make any difference. I couldn't agree more, as long as you followed aseptic technique. Of course I did. I believe you. But I'm going to advise you to lie to the board. What? She's right. Just say you used the prepackaged shot. Why? Because it's standard operating procedure. But it doesn't matter. It's just my advice. Don't give them anything. Rewrite it. I don't like lying. Is that because you're basically honest or because you're basically self-destructive? It's because I don't like lying. I did it for years with great ease and it only ever got me into more trouble. So one of the very few promises I made to myself is that I would not lie. Not when it was important. Braun Braun, that man, he was important. In that case, it was nice working with you. And the major issue is ownership of the murder weapon. The prosecution will say that it's Eric's and that he attacked and killed an unarmed man with it. We say the knife was Lobdell's and that he came to the house intending to use it. Luckily, Lobdell has a history of weapons violations. There's something you should know. Maxine, please. You should not put Eric on the stand. I think you understand what I mean. Okay. <clears throat> What's going on? Mom knows that Stu is an ethical lawyer, and he cannot knowingly let Eric lie on the stand. And I can't hear this either. You're going to lie on the stand? This is precisely why I did not want you to tell me what happened that night. My question to you is this. Who are you going to be when this is all over? Where did you meet Jason Lobdell? Bergen. Bergen Correctional Institute. Yeah, I was there for breaking and entering. Jace for armed robbery. Armed robbery? So he had a gun? No, a knife. Jace didn't like guns. He said they were too noisy. Uh, Your Honor, permission to show evidence to this witness? Yes, but please don't give it to him. I don't like his shifty eyes. Do you recognize this knife? Maybe it looks like it could be uh, kind of familiar. Mr. Thayer, you're currently housed at the Hartford Correctional Institute, is that right? Yeah, Your Honor. Yeah, I realize it's a lot better here than there, but if you don't get more succinct with your answers, I'm going to add to your sentence. All right. Jace had, like, 20 knives. I think I've seen that one before. I think I've seen him practice throwing with it. Even though it's not a throwing knife. Thank you. That's it for me. Thanks. <clears throat> Can you say for certain this weapon belonged to Jason Lobdell? Not for certain, for certain. Thank you. Morning, Judge Gray. Judge Paul. Nancy. Nancy, mm. we can't talk. No. Not about the trial or the defendant, so he won't. Okay. You know, I've never had a case so closely tied to another judge before. Especially one I respect. Respect? <laughs> we don't really know each other. I've read your judgments. You've left your mark. You've made a difference. Thank you, Judge Paul. Mm -hmm. That's why I hope we can uh, keep this professional. Not second-guess each other. Keep our own counsel after I've made my decision. You mean not describe you as eccentric to the press if you decide against Eric? Oh, now that you've said that particular name, I gotta go. Ta-ta. What was that? I think maybe she just told me she thinks Eric is guilty.
Do you solemnly swear and solemnly and sincerely affirm, as the case may be, that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God, or upon penalty of perjury? I do. Eric, did you kill Jason Lovedell? Yes. How? With that knife. Why'd you kill him? Did you hate him? No. I, I didn't know him except for that afternoon when he tried to kidnap Lauren. Your Honor, just answer the question, Eric. No. I didn't hate Jason Lovedell. Then why'd you kill him? I thought he was going to kill me. What made you think that? He told me so. He said he was going to use that knife to cut out my heart. Jason Lobdell was older than you, stronger, experienced with knives. Why are you sitting here charged with murder instead of him? Tell us what happened. We struggled for the knife, and uh, I don't know. I twisted and kicked and twisted, and then I had the knife. I showed it to him. But he kept coming. I stepped back and stepped back. I told him, I'll use this. I'll cut you. But he was mad, really mad. I was scared he was going to kill me. He was going to kill me. So you cut him? Yes. But he kept coming? I cut his arms good. He forced me up against the house. He tried to get the knife back. It was slippery in my hand. He was spraying blood everywhere. So I stabbed him in the chest. Did that stop him? No. We both fell down, and when we fell, I pushed the knife in as far as I could. It was crazy, but I thought I could I don't pin him to the ground and run away. We were just lying there, and uh, I felt him stop breathing. He stopped breathing. And I knew I didn't have to run. I'm going to call a 20-minute recess before the cross-examination. All rise. Don't do that. It doesn't suit you running away. Is this a speech about being friends? No, I don't believe in that. Cutting your feelings down, making them smaller. I don't want to be your friend. Fine. Given the choice of being your friend or something more, I'm going to choose something more. No one's giving you a choice. <laughs> you are wrong about Judge Gray and Mia. You are so wrong. I read your face both times. Then you read wrong. Now, I know you're not used to that, so it hits hard. But maybe what's going on here is that you're feeling something strong for me, and it's easier to run than to see it through. But, you know, I don't like Dr. Phil. So you can talk this all through with your girlfriends if you want to. I would, but I have nothing to discuss with them. No matter what you might think of these other women, you're the only one I take this much crap from. If it weren't for Rebecca, I would never see me again. And if you still think I have a thing for Judge Gray in six months, I'll quit my job. Now, what are you willing to do for me? I want to commend both lawyers. Ms. Lonsdale, you were thorough and fair and very painstaking. Thank you. You have an annoying habit of clearing your throat, but maybe that was nerves or an allergy. <clears throat> Thanks for the tip, Judge Bell. Mr. Collins, you're clever. Lots of nuance, a musical approach. Very kind, Your Honor. Thank you. You have a tendency to be tricky. And your charm won't work on every judge the way it's worked on me. Gotcha. Now, in the matter before me, I thought I was ready to rule on this matter, but then I got a little, little niggling feeling. You ever get that, Wes? Yeah, there was a very big question in this case that was never asked. It's really rare when both lawyers don't ask the big question. Anybody want to guess what that big question is? Didn't think so. Sit. Unlike a lawyer, I don't have to know the answer to a question before I ask it. 
I am not competitive. I'm not even a player in this thing. Hell, I am just the referee. There's no way for me to win or to lose. Lucky me. I get to ask the big question. Is this your knife, Eric? Did you wait, knife in hand, intending to take the life of this man? No, ma'am. He brought the knife. It's not mine. I'm finding Eric Black non-delinquent of all charges. I find that he acted in self-defense. I will release him to the custody of his foster father, Mr. Sean Potter. All rise. Thank you. You told them the truth, didn't you? So you lied. I told them the truth. Then what are you so happy about? Because we have been found non-culpable in the death of Mr. Ron Braun. I told you we'd leave it as we found it. Hi. And thank you. For what? Fixing the window? For Eric. And I am sorry for suggesting that you were implying that I shouldn't go to the press if you ruled against Eric. That's exactly what I was implying. Tell me he's a good boy. He's such a good boy. Would you have ruled the same way? I mean, the case is over, you know, Eric won. It's just that I believed him when he told me that the knife wasn't his, but... Something. Something. I don't know anything you don't know. And you think he may have saved your life? And your daughter's? Hmm. You like being a judge? I like it better than sitting in the gallery, that's for sure. You and I have a lot in common, you know, we're both considered nutty. I mean, the way I see it, we sit here and watch this parade of lunacy, mental deviance, wackos walk past us every day, if you ask me. They're nuts, not you. 
not me. Listen, you ever get to Norwich? Call me. We'll go skeet shooting. Hey, you know, you know, um, that um, thing you do, the uh, critiquing the lawyers. Mm. I might start doing that. Nothing beats ridiculing lawyers. It's very therapeutic. Try it on me. Defense lawyer extraordinaire. Because of him, Eric is with us tonight and not eating off a tray at Silver Street. Yes! All right, well, I'd like to say to you what I, I like to say to all of my clients, and um, I mean this from the heart. Friends we are today, and, and friends we will always be, for I am wise to you and you can see through me. Woo! Come on. Yeah, what do you think about it? That's remarkably cynical. What do you expect? I'm a hero. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Everything I said today was true. All but one thing. You're the guest of honor. You should be in there celebrating. I showed him the knife. I tried to scare him away. Uh, he tried to take the knife away, and he would have killed me. And that is precisely what you should have explained to the judge. I did it. Yes, I know. You did it for us. And Amy thanks you from the bottom of her heart. But I uh, cannot look at you the same way. I'm sad. And I'm disappointed. You got away with murder. And somehow, uh, all of us are going to have to figure out how to deal with that. No. All of us don't. Mark got in trouble with his parents today because of me. He told them about us, you know what I mean? Of course I do. So, probably the best thing would be for me and Mark to leave. Together. You mean run away? They'll be hiring tree planters in Canada soon. If you work hard, you can make a lot of money planting trees. Well, that's a stupid, romantic adolescent notion. Then I guess I'm a stupid, romantic adolescent. <laughs> Eric Black, you get back here right now. Eric, come back here. Come back here. Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime. Can the detectives connect the dots between two murdered husbands? Find out on Law & Order, next on TNT.